This week, the Senate DFL caucus elected a new leader. Joining me to talk about her new role as Senate Minority Leader is Senator Melissa Lopez Franzen. Welcome. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, first, congratulations are in order, and you are the first member of the Posse Caucus, the People of Color and Indigenous Caucus, and in fact, the first non-Caucasian person to achieve a top leadership role in the Senate. At Tuesday's press conference, when I asked you about this, you said, it's about time. What did you mean? Well, we, are knowing, we know that our growing population in the communities of color all over the country, not just Minnesota, uh, is happening exponentially, and we are ready to lead. We've been leading in, in business ownership. We've been leading in entrepreneurship. Uh, and now we just need to be um, immersed in the political sphere. So I think it's very important to have people like me in a position of power where we can actually see where we can end up uh, if we take that uh, opportunity to run for office. So I'm excited to be in this role and to hopefully inspire uh, people to run for office and, and step up in their political game. You were born and raised in Puerto Rico. You came to Minnesota for the Humphrey School of Public Affairs. Then you later received a law degree from Hamlin University. You were elected to the Senate in 2012 and you own a small business. What was your pitch to your colleagues as to why you should become their leader? Well, Shannon, I know uh, a lot of members knew that I flipped a district from red to blue in Senate District 49 back in 2012. I worked really hard, campaigned uh, really hard and fundraised, and they knew that uh, I not, not only did that back then, but I continued to do that and perform for our caucus. So they, they know my, my va values and ethics uh, of hard work, and I'm bringing that as, as something that um, is really important in this election to, to really be uh, present, to show up. Uh, to do the hard work and to also try to uh, merge ideas and, and sort of being a mediator to a certain extent. I'm a lawyer by trade. I can argue both sides. So I like to see both sides of a coin and be able to uh, try to get to, to some consensus on issues. And our caucus is really wanting people to step up for that game. According to census data, Minnesota's population growth is fully attributable to growth in the BIPOC, the black indigenous people of color population. The DFL has struggled to win in recent years in greater Minnesota, and there is growing diversity all across the state. So not just in um, urban and suburban regions, but all across the state. So how will the DFL win votes in greater Minnesota, especially in 2022? I think one of the, the elements is showing up, and I've been doing that, and our caucus has been showing up, whether it's Farm Fest or whether it's events across the, the state. Uh, we know that greater Minnesota has had uh, more issues in the farming community with the drought. So when we go to Farm Fest, we're going to ask farmers what they need from our state as a, as a good partner. Uh, when we go to uh, northern Minnesota, we're going to ask them what they think about mining, what they think about water quality. All those issues that we all care so much in the metro and those suburbs are the same issues that we see in the rural communities. We just have to go there and listen to them, uh, what is particularly their um, issues and how we can partner with them. So we're going to do that, uh, show up, uh, do the, talk to them, listen, uh, not preach and bring those ideas uh, back to the Capitol to represent their interest. Both you and Senate, the new Senate Majority Leader, Jeremy Miller, are parents to young children. You are both a generation younger than your predecessors. You both came to the Senate interested in co collaboration. Uh, Senator Miller was a co-founder of the Purple Caucus, and when you got here, you joined the Purple Caucus. Is there a changing of the guard underway? I sure think so. Uh, I've been, uh, when I was first elected, uh, I was asked whether I, I was er, er, old enough to vote. So that was back in 2012. I'm 41 years old right now. Uh, Jeremy Miller is just, uh, uh, just shy uh, of 40. But we are both coming with a new perspective of how we see the world, how we were um, you know, raised in, in our generation. And I think uh, there's more hunger to get things done and, and versus uh, the divisiveness we've seen in politics. And it's good to bring diversity of thought and age. And the fact that we both have young children, uh, that other people can see that they can have a political career in a political um, space uh, with young children, especially me as a, as a mom, as a woman, uh, we have uh, the perception that we can't do it all, but uh, we need a good team. And I think uh, uh, both Jeremy and I have that and we're able to step up to our leadership roles today. Have you noticed that there are differences in, in generations in terms of how you uh, work in the political sphere? Not just in generation, but also in, in background. Uh, we come from different sectors of the economy, whether you're a teacher, I'm a small business owner, an attorney, we have people who are, uh, have their own businesses. 
Uh, we bring a lot of diversity to, to this space, to this work, which is great. Generation is another factor, uh, but it all eventually works out and it's good to have that diversity. So I think we do bring differences and that's a good thing. Uh, governor Walls has established, uh, as of this week, a Governor's Council on Economic Expansion. Recommendations from this group will be due to the legislature before the coming session. The governor spoke of the mismatch between jobs and job seekers and also said that the economic recovery is not treating all Minnesotans equally. What is needed, in your view, to help Minnesota's economy? Well, the issue of, of not having the workers that we need for our workplace and for those jobs is, is a complex one. It's not just because of one factor. So we have to really unpack it and, and, and peel that onion, whether it's child care, whether it's uh, uh, you need a better uh, paying job and, and $12 is not a, a sustainable living wage. Uh, we have to step up the game because it's, been, it's becoming more expensive to get products and, and even food, to put food on the table. Families are struggling with more. Uh, certainly with COVID, we've seen that families are taking on more for their children and for their elderly parents. So we have to understand uh, that the economy has fundamentally changed and, and we have to catch up to that. Uh, so I think one of it is, is, is a labor, um, you know, the living wage, like I mentioned, but also uh, issues of paid family leave that the Democrats have been really uh, shepherding for a long time. I'm a small business owner. I like to give my employees benefits, but there's some challenges to doing that. So also, how do we get access to health care that we can all afford, including small business owners? Uh, Senate Leader Miller has been very clear that public safety will be an important issue for Republicans in the coming legislative session. Where does the DFL stand on public safety issues? Well, well, we've been really strong on public safety in the Senate. That's where the movement has been to to get the Republicans to to share uh, the urgency to change and reform a lot of our policing practices. And that starts with licensing. We have the role to change how we license police, how we hold accountable uh, training and those things that have been uh, really powerful that we've had support from law enforcement to change. Uh, we just need the will of the Republicans to do the right thing, to move and, and trust and having, you know, bring that trust back to our communities. It starts with accountability. We funded law enforcement and we also want those dollars to go to good use so that people in any community, whether it's Minneapolis, St. Paul, Edina, Minnesota or Grand Rapids, that we all have those uh, uh, ability to have safe communities. And, and we know that there's been an uptick in, in crime. Uh, we, we know that we need to trust our, our people who are going to keep us safe, but we also have to bring community with us and have that part of the conversation of what solutions we want in those areas of our state. Before we go, what are some of the other issues that the DFL will be working hard on now and into the coming legislative session? Well, we know one of the main things right now is health care. Because of this COVID pandemic, we've known how um, disproportionately some communities have been uh, targeted uh, because they have had less access to health care. We all knew that. We just need to do something better for them. So I think those are issues that we're going to continue to push. Obviously, education is huge for the Democrats and make sure that everybody has equitable access to education, to have the diversity they need to see in the classrooms and the funding that they need to make sure that students and teachers are safe. Uh, but also mainly jobs. We all need safe jobs, sustainable jobs, and, and that's something that I'm really looking forward to working on. Senate Minority Leader Melissa Lopez-Franzen, I want to thank you. Thank you.